So uh, last time we met, we were talking about uh, class invariance as a um, as a technique for us to make sure that certain certain properties uh, for the class are initially set to be true, and then all the other methods that uh, ever change the state of that uh, of instances of that class guarantee that that statement was was uh, was uh, always true. Okay? That um, uh, there was an initial state right, that guaranteed that we started in a uh, in a consistent state, right, in, in, a, in a correct state, and that all the other methods you know, guarantee that, uh, you know, assumed that this state was true, and whatever mo modifications they did with the state always left the state in a, in a uh, correct uh, version. And, uh, um, you know, we, we, um, we, had, uh, we had some logical statements that we needed to identify. What is it that we are trying to always have uh, true? And, uh, and then the constructors and the methods preserve uh, this state going forward. And we, uh, we um, uh, right, we have the, and, and, and typically we, we meant this by an instantaneous state, right, at a particular time and in, in place. Uh, that uh, we didn't, we, we could not guarantee things going in the future or, uh, you know, things having that were st uh, stately, uh, stated uh, vaguely. Uh, we only talk about any particular uh, instant, instant in the moment that this particular uh, expression or this particular predicate was true, right? this particular logical statement. And we, we went through a couple of uh, non-invariants, right, that uh, we cannot guarantee things being small always, right? Things could be, uh, when, whenever you say something is small, typically it's because you're comparing against something, right? So that is not, uh, it's not something you can determine at any one particular time and moment. Uh, since, since that, uh, things such as never or always are also very uh, not not there's no way to guarantee that right uh, uh, you know forever is such a long time especially towards the end uh, there's no way for us to to, to guarantee that um, you know things that being non-negative so we looked at some of these uh, examples as invariants and things that were not invariants things that we could not guarantee at a, at a particular moment in in, uh, in time and space. Um, so, so what um, what class invariance uh, introduces is uh, what we refer to as reasoning, the um, uh, the class invariant reasoning principle, right? Uh, and and we're going to be going back to the connect n uh, toy example that we talked about last week. You know the uh, the tic tac toe and connect four, and then we expanded it to a general sense and. So we could use that as an example, right? To, to, to as an exercise, what what were the invariants in the in those in that particular example, uh, and and things that and, and you should use these type of uh, reasoning uh, also as you work through your own assignment. You know, what are the invariants uh, of the of the particular classes that you're working through uh, through the through your own assignments, right? And it's something that, that should be identified at any problem that uh, that you're faced with. What are the things that I know that must be true? Right, that uh, the constructor guarantees um, a, an initial state, and then and then uh, whenever I implement a method, uh, I, I always should uh, question the implementation of that method. Does that method you know, change that invariance? So does it guarantee that uh, that when I leave that method, right, that that invariance is, is still true? Uh, then, you know, does that method assume that that invariance is true coming in, and then when it leaves, that it leaves it uh, still uh, unchanged? Uh, so, so looking looking back at the uh, connect n example that uh, we, uh, you have been, uh, we started working uh, as a as a toy example last week. Right, what are the things that uh, you? What are some of the invariants uh, from there? Right. If you remember, we had uh, we were representing various columns. Uh, I think we decided on lists of lists, uh, you know, to represent uh, integers. There were each integer represented a player and a position in some board. Yes. Um, and, and different tokens representing one player or another player, and, and we started we started getting more and more general as uh, as, as, as as allowing you know, you know any size of the board, uh, allowing to have any number of players. Um, so we, we started getting more and more generic. Uh, you know, eventually the the became becoming so uh, meaningless, right? The, 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 our generic implementation. Uh, so we're not going to go that far. At, at uh, we're, we're going to abandon this. Uh, you know. Um, uh, this generalization into oblivion. Uh, instead, we're going to stick to to the uh, our our, uh, our first uh, implementation of uh, of using lists of lists, uh, having st a status for knowing when the when the when the game was was over, 
a width and a height to represent the different properties of the application. So what are, what are, some, of the, what are some of the invariants uh, of that particular implementation? Right? Well, there are certain things that, that we want to guarantee, right? things that uh, uh, we know that just don't make sense. Right? And we never want to be in a, uh, in a state that just make no, makes no sense. Right? For instance, uh, things such as uh, dimensions uh, being negative, that makes no sense. And also things such as, uh, notice that we have a little bit of redundancy here, right, where we represent the board in two different ways, right? One, we have a list of lists, right, where the outer list represents the columns, right, and the inner list represents the rows, right? And uh, one, one invariance that we'd like to make, make sure is that uh, we also represent the size of the board, not only uh, with width and height, but also the, the, the sizes of those lists are also kind of representing the same thing. Right, the height and the width. So it would be uh, it would be nonsensical that the width and height say say one thing, and, and then the lists are of some other size. It just makes no sense, right? That the the, the width uh, says that it's uh you know it's four columns, but the size of the list is actually five, right? It would just make no sense. So somehow we have to make sense, make a, we have to guarantee that those two sizes always match, yes, and that any method that uh, that comes afterwards. You know, it doesn't inadvertently make that untrue. Yes? Now, again, these are toy examples, right? These are trivial uh, examples that we're working with. And you know, imagine right, uh, you know, um, you know, the difficulties of maintaining uh, class invariance in such a simple example uh, when you're working with, with something that's such mo much more complicated. Right? Uh, the, the invariance will be um, much more uh, challenging. Uh, so, so yeah, so, so we look at the values of the columns, right? Uh, presumably the values in those columns represent real users, uh, presumably some tokens, uh, perhaps uh, you know, one, one user is represented by the token one and the other is represented by the token two. So it would make no sense to have a three or a four in there, yes? Uh, and uh, so we need, to, we need to impose certain, certain these, uh, these truths, right? This, uh, this representation of, of data uh, and make sure that any any method that changes the state of the board that it respects these uh, these invariants. So we, first we have to identify them, and then make sure that all our methods uh, respect these uh, these invariants. Uh, so some some of the invariants that uh, we might uh, identify, you know, after uh, analyzing our toy example, uh, are that um, right that uh, the dimensions of the board uh, are always you know make sense right that they don't have they're not negative. Um, and, and these things, right, so, uh, we said that some of these invariants could be imposed by the language. Some of them need to be imposed by our logic, right? Uh, we can certainly use the language to impose that these are all integers, right? We just declare them as integers. That's it, right? But uh, other things, such as uh, making th sure that they're, not, they're always positive, right? We, we, we guard them either by a try-catch block, right? We validate the, the initial state, and we throw, we throw an exception if they're not what we expect. Um, also, always, right, whenever, whenever the logic updates the turn, right, who's, whose turn? Is it my turn, your turn? Uh, if it's an end players, right, we need to make sure that uh, it keeps track of whose turn it is, right? And that, uh, it, and, and whatever, whose turn it is always matches a, a valid player, and that it's that outside of the boundaries of how many players we have. So we have to guarantee that, right, that the, that the columns of the, that the, that the sizes of the columns and the sizes of the rows of the nested arrays that we're using to represent the board, right? That they match the width and the height uh, status uh, fields. Uh, that the that the elements uh, are not null, and and that represents some value uh, of uh, zero to players minus one, right? So player zero, player one, player two, player three. You know, how, however many players we have, right? The tokens are always representing some valid uh, some valid player. Uh, uh, so, so yeah, so we need, to, we need to first determine what these invariants are and then make sure that our code uh, guarantees that these invariants are always true, right? that uh, uh, they start from initial state and then, and then never leave that, that, uh, uh, that um, uh, you know, it never puts us, puts, puts us in some nonsensical state. Okay? Uh, so, so the strategy that... Um, the, the strategy that we're going to be using is a two-phase strategy, right? First one is a what which we're going to re refer to as a rely and guarantee, right? So, so uh, every single method will will follow this strategy, right? And all methods should uh, should first you know assume 
that we're starting from an initial state that is uh, sensible, right? That it's not in a nonsensible state. But then, one, so whenever we go into a method, we assume that, that we are in a good state, right? And, and when we leave that, that, uh, that, that method, right, we guarantee that that state is still uh, sen uh, makes sense, right? That, um, and, and that there is no other method right, that vi violates this, uh, this strategy. Right? That, uh, you know, first we start off with, some, uh, with a, a constructor that uh, makes sure that we start an initial state or we have some factory method uh, that we call and validates all these, all these things, right? Uh, and, and, then, and then never, and there's any, no, no other <coughs> method uh, will, will uh, violate uh, this, this state, right? We'll, we'll assume that the only way that I got to this method was either from a constructor, right, or from some constructor, uh, I'm sorry, some uh, factory method, right, that, that made sure that we started from a, a sensible state, right? And I'm going to just, get, so my responsibility is to make sure that I guarantee uh, that that state is always true. Uh, so the, the strategy starts starts off by um, by implementing constructors, right? That ensure that the property is uh, is uh, is true, that the that the that the um, you know if, if, it, if this is a, an account, right? That I don't start with a negative balance, uh, and uh, you know that I start off with uh, some minimal ba minimum balance based on the type of uh, account, right? If it's a uh, uh, if it's a savings account, or if this is an investment account, or if it's a uh, checking account, and there's a minimum, yes, uh, and there might be several rules uh, associated with that particular account, right? That I, I can't withdraw more than you know so much amount of money that particular day, or or I can't withdraw more than so much every week, or whatever, right? Or that my account can no cannot go below a particular uh, a particular amount, right? Depending on my particular account, and if it's below something, then there's fees associated with it, right? Those fees that we love and hate. Uh, so, so, so the constructor you know, puts us in an initial state, uh, and then every single method that, that follows guarantees that all these invariants are true. Right? That, um, so every method responsibility is to you know, preserve the property or assume <coughs> that the only way that I got here was that the state was true, and, the only, and, and when I leave this state, I leave it in a uh, insensible state, right? You know, especially, especially when, when you have things such as you know, you withdraw with, when you're transferring money between accounts. So it would make no sense that somehow I withdrew from one, one account and I deposited into account, uh, that uh, somehow, the, the, you know, if I'm transferring from account A to account B, that somehow the withdrawal was, uh, was successful, but the deposit wasn't, right? Uh, that somehow I, I withdrew 100, I was transferring $100 from account A to account B, uh, that uh, it would, I, I would never want to run into the case that I was able to withdraw the hundred dollars from account A, but somehow a crash or something uh, did not allow me to deposit the hundred dollars into the other account. Yes, it would be a nonsensical that somehow these hundred dollars disappeared from account A, but never made it into account B. Right. So uh, even if there's a crash, even if a, a threat goes uh, goes awry, right, we want to guarantee the fact that uh, some somehow. <laughs> Uh, we can we can um, uh, guarantee that the state is correct that one hundred dollars just didn't just go missing, right? Between between these two operations, um, uh, you know we don't we, we all we always want to be able to go at least backtrack our way into a, a uh, uh, in, into a sensical state, right? Um, uh, right. So so we want to make sure that uh, you know these represent uh, that whatever we represent, how we represent in the methods, right? Uh, are always going to rule out. Uh, any anything that uh, might go uh, wrong. Uh, so let's let's take an example. Uh, 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 rational numbers, 